Hi there. Uh, so uh, in the previous videos, uh, we started talking about analytical functions. Um, and in particular, we saw that um, if let's say uh, we consider uh, in, in order to discuss like the analytical properties and derivatives of complex functions or derivatives of functions, uh, we're basically looking at a very local or microscopic region uh, of the z-plane and then seeing the effect of the mapping uh, or what the mapping does to such infinitesimal figures or arrows on the z-plane uh, with a whiz how they're mapped onto the w-plane. And, and that's what we mean when we say that uh, when we're studying uh, uh, the, the derivative or, or differential calculus, we are looking at microscopic or local properties of functions. Um, so, uh, so what we saw uh, in, uh, in the previous uh, video was that, let's say we make a copy of the z-plane uh, and let's label the real axis as x and the imaginary as y. And then we make a copy of the w-plane, uh, labeling them as u and v, the real and the imaginary axis respectively. Um, and then if we uh, consider an infinitesimal vector in the z-plane, uh, let's say it looks like this. So it starts at the point z and goes to the point z plus dz1. Um, and likewise, we can consider another vector which starts from z and goes to, let's say, uh, z plus dz2. Um, and if you look at uh, the, this, these infinitesimal arrows of um, under an analytical mapping, how these arrows get transformed onto the w plane. So let's say wz is an analytical mapping then the image of this arrow might, let's say in the w plane, uh, so for instance, the point z might map to the point w, and the endpoint of uh, this arrow that goes from z to z plus dz1 might go from w to w plus dw1. And likewise, the image of the arrow that goes from z to z plus dz2 uh, might go to uh, z, uh, w plus dw2. Then um, for an analytical mapping, or the way we uh, uh, define a mapping that's analytical, uh, which requires that a unique derivative at the point z exists. Uh, in order for that to happen, the angle between the vectors, uh, if the angle between the vectors in the z plane uh, is let's say theta, then the angle between the image vectors in the w plane is also theta. Uh, and this angle is preserved both in magnitude, so the modulus of the angle is theta, and also in sense. So if it's counterclockwise in the z plane, it's also counterclockwise in the w plane. Um, and, and this is what led us to uh, sort of uh, conclude that analytical mappings are also conformal. Um, so we haven't talked much about conformal mappings, although uh, from this we already get, get a sense of what a conformal mapping is. It's basically a kind of mapping which preserves uh, the angle between vectors both in magnitude and direction, um, uh, angle between curves both in magnitude and direction at every point uh, in the region that we are considering, uh, in this case let's say the z-plane. Um, so, so analytical mappings are conformal and we'll talk more about conformal mappings in uh, future videos. Um, but but the important point to keep important thing to keep in mind is that the angle between infinitesimal vectors is preserved um, in in a mapping from the z to the w plane. Okay, so uh, in order to see that, in fact, uh, in fact, this idea, um, uh, a lot of the mappings that we have studied so far, uh, we haven't studied too many of them, but the mappings that we have considered so far give us an sort of uh, uh, in fact, we, we'll see. We, let, let's just work out a couple of examples where we'll see that, in fact, uh, uh, the mappings that we have studied so far give us an example of both kinds of mappings: mappings that are not analytical and mappings that are analytical. Um, so let's just see how that comes about, and uh, and let's begin with a, a very simple mapping, which is W Z equals Z. Now this is uh, also called the identity map. Um, and because uh, th this is because every point in the z-plane is mapped to an identical point in the w-plane. Um, so <clears throat> what does the uh, what, what, what do the z and the w-plane look like in this case if we consider infinitesimal vectors? Um, so let's say this is the z-plane and this is the w-plane. And let's draw, um, let's pick a point z and draw an infinitesimal vector uh, around z that goes from z to let's say dz1, z plus dz1. And likewise, let's draw another vector that goes from z to z plus dz2. Now, under this mapping, and in fact, we, uh, we can also derive what the u and v uh, coordinates are under this mapping. So if w is u plus iv uh, and z is x plus iy, then we know that under this mapping, u is x and v is y. Okay, so the image of the point z will be, again, the point z. Uh, but since we are labeling the coordinates as u and v, uh, 
we just call this point as W. Of course, this point and this point are exactly the same in, for this particular mapping. Uh, and so the image of this vector will also be an exactly identical vector here. And the image of this vector will be an exactly identical vector here. Okay, now, now how do we see whether this mapping is analytical or not? Well, uh, one of the conditions or the most important condition that, we, uh, that we've been talking about is that the angle between the vectors is preserved. Um, now in this case, since this vector is mapped exactly to the same vector and the pink vector is also mapped exactly to the same pink vector, if, the, if let's say this vector were making an angle theta 1 initially with the x-axis and this vector were making an angle theta 2, uh, then in order to get the image vector, the amount by which we need to rotate this is 0. We don't need to do any rotation. So this vector also makes an angle of theta 1 and the pink vector, the image pink vector also makes an angle of theta 2. So the angle between the vectors uh, in the z plane, and I'm just putting a subscript to denote that this is the angle between the vectors in the z plane, in this case is theta 2 minus theta 1, then the angle between the, uh, the vectors in the w plane is also theta 2 minus theta 1. Um, so under this mapping, uh, the angle uh, locally uh, for infinitesimal vectors is preserved, um, and you can draw any set of vectors and see that that will be the case, um, then therefore this mapping is analytical. Uh, so W is equal Z is uh, an example of a mapping that is analytical and is also conformal. Um, now, um, so let's look at another mapping uh, where, which we have started, uh, another function that we have looked at. And in this case, let's just take Z and consider its conjugate. So we look at the mapping W Z equals Z bar. Okay, so again, if we derive the functions U and IV, then U plus IV in this case is X minus IY. So u is x and v is minus over y. And let's let's just see what the plots look like now. So this is the z plane and this is the w plane. Um, so let's label this x, y, uh, u and v. And again, let's consider exactly the same figures, uh, same vectors. So we, we are at the point z and then we make uh, one infinitesimal vector and then we make another infinitesimal vector this goes from z to z, d, dz1 and z plus dz2. Okay, and let's again take the angle uh, that the vector z plus dz, z from z to z plus dz1 make as the angle theta1 and let this be angle theta2. Now, under the conjugate mapping, what we're doing is we're flipping the y coordinate. Um, so, if the point z lies here, then its image, uh, so if this is let's say x comma y, then the image will lie at x comma minus y. So the image of the point z will be somewhere here. So the image of this vector will be somewhere here. And likewise, the image of the pink vector will be somewhere here. Now, this means that the angle that uh, the image vector makes uh, with respect to the x-axis is minus theta 1 for the white vector and it's minus theta 2 for the pink vector, right? Okay, which means that the amount of, so if you, if you consider the vector that goes from z to z plus dz1, then the amount of rotation or the amount by which we need to, so first of all, the amount by which we need to magnify it in order to get the image vector is just one unit. We don't need to do any magnification. Uh, and this is also evident because uh, modulus of u squared plus v squared is actually equal to modulus of x squared plus y squared. Um, However, the amount of rotation that we have to do is theta 1 and then theta 1 in the clockwise direction to uh, align this vector with the x-axis and then another, another theta 1 along the clockwise direction to align it with this vector. So the amount of rotation that the pink vector undergoes, uh, let's just write it as, let's just write it here. So the rotation that the, uh, uh, the white vector undergoes is rotation is minus 2 theta 1 of the white vector. The rotation that the pink vector undergoes is likewise minus of 2 theta 2. So the rotation is minus 2 theta 2. Okay, so, so what this means is that we have to rotate the white vector by an amount which is different from the amount by which we need to rotate the pink vector in order to get the image vector, right? Um, which means that the angle between, uh, or rather the angle between these vectors in the image plane cannot be preserved because in order to preserve the angle, we need to rotate both the vectors by the same amount. But in this case, we are rotating the white vector by an amount minus two theta one and the pink vector by an amount minus two theta two, right? So the angle between the vectors cannot be preserved by, 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 by during this process. 
and therefore wz equals z bar um, is an example of a mapping that is not analytic. It does not preserve the angle between vectors. Um, in fact, if the angle between the vectors in this case is uh, delta theta z is theta 2 minus theta 1, then in this case delta theta w is the angle that this makes is minus theta 2 plus uh, theta 1. So this angle uh, or this uh, delta theta w is negative of the angle delta theta z. However, for an analytical mapping, both the magnitude and sense or the sign of the angle have to be preserved. Whereas in this case, the angle is actually negative of the one that's on the z plane. So this is, so delta theta w is minus of delta theta z. So w z equals z, so this mapping, w z equals z is analytic. This is analytic, whereas this mapping is not analytic. And, and because analytical mappings are also conformal, if this mapping is not analytic, this mapping is also not conformal. And in fact, this particular mapping is called uh, an anti-conformal mapping because it preserves the magnitude of the angle, but it does not preserve the, the sense. It actually reverses the sense of the angle. And it's sometimes called an anti-conformal mapping. Um, and in fact, this is a very important example to keep in mind because W z equals z bar is actually a very prototypical, prototypical example of a mapping that is non-analytical. Um, and, 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 and sort of, um, if, if we see functions with z bar appearing independently uh, in some manner, then it's, it's, uh, we, we need to do a few checks, but it's, it's, it's a very likely sign that uh, the mapping uh, may not be analytical. Uh, but we'll derive some sort of equations to figure out when a mapping is analytical or not, um, and that'll make, make these ideas even more clearer. Um, but for now, I just wanted to sort of discuss two very simple mappings that we've already talked about and see uh, how, they, how, how they fit into our description of functions that are analytical. Uh, um, and in and, and, and future videos, let's talk about a few more examples and also derive uh, equations which are very important in the study of complex functions, uh, which provide us with necessary uh, conditions for functions being analytical or not. Um, so uh, see you soon in the next videos. Thanks.